Hi, my name's Leah. I'm one of the presenters here at SciTech. And today, what I wanted to talk to you about is a really cool exhibit just behind me, but it's also one that gets missed a little bit. And it's the Share Your Shadow, or what I like to call the Freeze Your Shadow, which quite literally freezes your shadow. And the way that it works is two very important things. First thing, you need a really big, bright light source. And second thing is you need a phosphorescent wall. And so the way that it works, you've seen glowing things before, particular things that fluoresce. When you have the fluorescent object, put it under a light, it glows. Then as soon as you take the light away, it starts to disappear. Phosphorescence though, it's a little bit different. It's absorbing that light energy, the photons all around us, but it absorbs it and holds onto it for a little bit and slowly releases it. So even when you take away the light source, it still starts to glow a little after the fact. And that's what we can see with this one here. So it's great that we can capture our shadow onto a phosphorescence wall, but you can also draw pictures on there as well. All you need is a really bright torch and you can draw away, draw a picture, draw a message, and that phosphorescence wall, it captures that light and it glows that message for a little while afterwards as well, which is always fun to do too. And one of the most common forms of fluorescence objects is just ones that you might find on your ceiling, which is, our wonderful glow-in-the-dark stars. So it's the same thing, you've got your lights shining on all through the night, as soon as you flick that light off, you have a wonderful night sky above you. So it's just that energy slowly being released and depending on what you wear, sometimes things can fluoresce as well. So you might think, oh, that's really cool to do at SciTech, but what on earth can I do at home? Well, Yes, we can draw pictures and make patterns on phosphorescent walls, but you could do the same thing at home, not using phosphorescence though, using something else called long exposure. When you take a picture with your camera, you've got the photons, the energy of light bouncing off the object into the camera's receptor, and that's how you get your picture. But if you use long exposure, you're opening up that time, you're lengthening that time, so more photons of light can get into the camera and you end up getting some really cool images. Astrophotography is really good at using this. So for example, once I tried to take some images of a lunar eclipse, and as you can see, it's not really that good, is it? You've got a really dark image with a moon and Mars. But when I took an image with long exposure, well then, suddenly you have a lot more detail. Not only can you see the moon and Mars much more clearly, but you might not even realize that there was a tree there before. So these are the really cool things that you can do with long exposure. And for example, if you're lucky enough to have a telescope, you can actually take some pretty impressive images. But getting back to how you can do this at home, not only can you do astrophotography with long exposure cameras, and sometimes something as simple as your phone is useful enough. But what I would recommend you doing is something called light drawing. So find a camera, whether it's your mom or dad's phone, turn it on to long exposure, which is adjusting the shutter speed, maybe eight to 10 seconds, find a really dark room, a bright torch, and then you can make your very own light drawings. And I recommend you doing that and then sending them into us so we can see how amazing you guys are at doing your very own stuff.